I grew up in Auckland and uh, I've lived in other places. I've travelled quite a lot, but Auckland's always been my home, really. I'm in my early 60s. I've been a musician since I was a teenager, since I was at school. I started uh, getting interested in music, partly because my family was very musical. My dad was a professional jazz pianist. Both sides of my family, my mum's and dad's side, there were, lo- there were lots of musicians. Uh, so I was always, it was always a, a, around, but I took it for granted as a child until I heard the Beatles, and uh, that kind of switched me on, and I thought, gee, I'd like to do that, and so I started to grow my hair long and all that kind of thing. Got into uh, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and all that kind of late 60s, early 70s music, particularly, I suppose, would be my biggest influences. Bob Dylan's a very big influence of mine. I probably... Um, if I, you're talking about other people's songs, I, I probably know more Bob Dylan and Larry Norman songs than any other one composer. I know, I know a lot of Beatles and stuff like that too, but um, those guys were a big influence. And uh, I was in bands, uh, you know, as soon as I got out of school and, and it, well, even while I was still at school a little bit and playing at dances and all that sort of thing. And I became really attracted to the counterculture um, the uh, the whole hippie kind of movement and alternative lifestyles and that sort of thing because um, our generation, I think, we were very aware that that the material world wasn't enough. There had to be more than that. So I was I was brought up going to church. My mum and dad were Catholics. Oh, well, I was a Catholic boy too, although I wasn't interested in in church then. I, I just found it boring. But I had to go along every Sunday, and so I got to hear the stories about Jesus and all that kind of thing. And I, I guess I thought that Jesus was a bit of a, you know, he was a cool guy. He was a sort of like a, a, a bit of a hero, I suppose, you know, like Martin Luther King or Gandhi or, um, you know, all that sort of thing. I guess I thought of him much like those 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 guys. But uh, as I say, I was a, I was a hippie, and uh, so I got into all that sort of music, Woodstock, and you know, the psychedelics, and I. I, I dabbled with drugs and of course I was always looking for girlfriends and wanted, sort of wanted to be a rock and roll star you know um, although New Zealand is a long way away from the rest of the world um, we're quite geographically isolated and in that late 60s early 70s time the only way you could make it if you like as a musician was to go overseas to come to somewhere like New York or uh, uh, San Francisco or London uh, where, the, where it was all happening and I guess I was too much of a homeboy at that stage to, to want to make that big jump so I stayed here anyway the uh, hippie culture I really enjoyed for a while but I, I started to see that there were things missing with it that it wasn't enough and that all we had, though we had all these ideas of love and peace and, and, and uh, saving the world um, we just didn't have what it took to do that and um I found myself thinking more about spiritual things and I had friends who were, you know, into various gurus and chanted Hare Krishna and all sorts of things like that and I I tried a lot of that stuff myself too but it never really took, never really worked for me and uh, I found myself thinking more and more about Jesus and of course all this time I was into music and I was listening to all the words of Donovan and Dylan and... uh, Joni Mitchell and all those people and and, and uh, saying lovely things and reading quite a lot of poetry as well. I I, uh, I now write poetry as well as music. In fact, I started writing poetry before I ever started writing songs. But so I was reading all this poetry and, and nice music, saying all sorts of lovely things, but a part of me knew that we weren't quite managing to, to do that. We weren't those beautiful people that we wanted to be. So I started, I found myself thinking more and more about Jesus. And of course, this would have been my church background and things like that. When I went to Mass as a child, I found that rituals and everything rather boring. But they had these lovely little story books that we used to, the kids used to have. And they were all the stories about Jesus. And they had pictures with them. So even if you didn't, couldn't be bothered reading the story, you could look at the pictures and you could see Jesus healing somebody who was sick or rebuking the devil when he was being tempted or being put on the cross or sitting with his friends and talking and they were they, 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 this whole life of Jesus everything to do with him seemed very beautiful to me and um, I suppose as a child that sort of beauty is you're attracted to it in the same way as you're attracted to Santa Claus or fairy stories you know and so I guess that's what my my understanding of Jesus was as a child 
But when it came to looking for the truth, Jesus was the story that kept coming back to me. And so I eventually, uh, I eventually one day I decided, well, if God is true, and I didn't know for sure if God was or not, but I thought if God is true, then it's, he's probably Jesus. And so I talked to him. I was walking down the street one day and I just prayed. I mean, I, I, I uh, didn't really know how to pray except for, you know, I'd heard Catholic prayers, you know, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, that sort of stuff. So I knew the ritually sort of prayers, the formal prayers. But I just talked to God like I'm talking to you now. And um, I said to him, well, God, if, if you're there, would you show yourself to me somehow? Because I want to live a good life. I want to do the right thing. And and I, I know that the things that I do wrong sometimes, if it's true what they say, the Christians say that the things I do wrong hurt you, well then I'm sorry because I don't mean to do wrong, but I know that I do. I know I, I fail to live up to my own standards, and let alone anybody else's. So um, if you could show yourself to me somehow, please do. I thought, no, I'm not going to go around looking for signs, you know, because you could always psych yourself into something, you know. Um, I'm not going to look for a miracle or flash of lightning in the sky or any of that sort of thing. I was about a week later, I went into a church. And the reason I went wasn't anything to do with looking for God. It was that some friends of mine told me that it was a beautiful building and it had nice stained glass windows and all that sort of thing. And I thought, oh, that sounds pretty cool, you know, hippies. But anyway, I went into this church. I, while I was sitting there, I had this experience of Jesus talking to me. And he didn't say anything like I would have expected, which made me all the more sure that it must have been, that it wasn't just me. And he said to me, why don't you stop looking at other people and look at me for a change? And at the moment that I heard those words, and this was kind of in my head, you know, but I felt like I could see somebody. I felt like there was somebody standing in the aisle, but I couldn't tell you what he looked like. But anyway, that's what, the, that's what came into my mind. And at that moment, I realized that Jesus was everything I was looking for. And I didn't know the sinner's prayer or any of that kind of stuff that Christians talk about, you know, that you had to do, that you had to confess your sins and all that stuff. But I had done it anyway, because God's, God's laws are written in our hearts. In our, in our hearts somewhere, we know what the truth is. We know what we need to do. And when my moment was right, I knew what to do. And I said, Lord Jesus, I, I believe in you. And that was it. And I didn't know about being born again and stuff, but, uh, but that's what happened to me. Something happened, and my life has changed from that moment. And I, haven't, I don't mean like I've been perfect. I just mean that from that moment, I knew what life was about. I had purpose, and I'd met with God. I'd connected with God. And despite you know the negative things that might happen in your life sometimes, that experience never leaves you when you have it. It's like having met my wife, Brenda. Now that I've met her, even if we separated or, you know, everything went bad for us, I could never say that I haven't met Brenda because I have, and that's an undeniable fact of my life. And so my meeting with God was the same kind of thing. And um, it's something that's always open to all of us. And uh, we just have to ask for it.